Hello everybody, and uh, welcome to Education Committee, Skills Employment Scrutiny. Uh, welcome to the meeting, uh, the meeting is being webcast. Uh, we've had apologies from Councillor Barbara Murray and uh, Councillor Mike Story. Uh, we've also had apologies from Mark Ray and uh, Maria McGarry. Are there any other apologies? Screening work plan items. <coughs> so, looking at page uh, 13 to 66 of the agenda pack, this is a this is a single item agenda because it's uh, it's been requested because um, there's an expectation that there'll be a detailed review carried out by the committee on this item. <coughs> so, I'm hoping that the uh, that the relevant officers can give us a quick guide through on what's uh, what's involved. Um, 
benefits from that growth. Um, it is very much a city strategy, and through the work we're kind of um, re-establishing uh, um, strong partnerships with our anchor institutions and our partners to take a real outcomes-based approach um, to how we can drive this and tackle poverty across the city and tackle the inequality. Um, so the, the strategy then aims that we have that kind of the right um, tools within a, you know, tools to work in partnership to tackle that climate emergency, support our society to get access to better jobs, raises the skill levels um, of, our, of our residents, um, and thereby improving household income, and, we, and that can link then to that yeah, huge impact that improves household income has on life, in, um, on life outcomes for our residents. Um, so this is a slide we've seen last time, so that's said we want to be secure in that, that inclusive growth, but also we want to be very much positioning Liverpool as a place to do business and invest. So the strategy's got quite a, um, a, a tricky role to play in, in both um, setting out how we're going to bring our residents and our businesses with us to, to tackle that economic kind of exclusion, but also really showcase the strengths of Liverpool, the opportunity it, it presents, um, and create that, uh, that really strong narrative for how we're going to drive um, future inward investment into the city to drive that growth. Um, we've taken a really data-led approach, and you'll see that in the slides in a second. Um, and we want very much to take that place-based approach that really understands Liverpool's challenges, opportunities, and um, really the, 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 the brief I had, the brief that we passed on, is that this has got to be a city-wide strategy, and it's not just about the city centre, it's, it's a holistic strategy. Um, really importantly, um, that last bullet there is about that building resilience, and we'll get into that a bit more about how, how we need to tackle that later on um, and improving that long term productivity. In the business resilience. There is a, there is a slide on it. Can I? Can yeah. we pop it? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah and, it's, and it'll be, and there's, a, there's a pretty diagram. <laughs> Today, next slide because it's not moving for me. Um, just a, a very quick refresh on the commitments. Um, so, we have the original city plan commitments about driving that strong inclusive economy, council plan, um, with the current council plan, and a strong fair economy for all. And then we are part of that, that city plan and that um, the refresh that's underway at the moment with the local strategic partnership. So, this will be one of the suite of city documents, city wide documents, alongside things like the housing strategy. Uh, the, the forthcoming the transport strategy that's underway um, and the waste and recycling strategy, which are kind of the foundational kind of key drivers across um, to deliver a kind of better city uh, for 2040. No, sorry, next slide, please. Where we are, we've been scoping, um, we've had a, a lots of um, internal uh, working groups across council, um, we've had some stakeholder workshops, which I'll touch on later, and, and member engagement. Um, but through that, we developed the evidence base, which we'll go through some of today. We set out kind of the, um, the forecast for our future growth and what that looks like and where jobs uh, will be forthcoming. We're now getting into the kind of the outcomes we want to achieve and moving into the phase where we're um, then looking at the kind of the implementation plan, the action plan for it. Um, we're, um, we'll be going out to consultation. Um, so when we go to cabinet, we'll be asking for approval to go out for consultation. And we can come back around then in terms of out to the public and back to yourselves. So on to the open space. Um, we have got some brilliant statistics in terms of we've got an extremely young, vibrant and diverse population, um, just under half a million, um, kind of the Meridian age there, um, and we're 32% of the um, uh, LCR's population, which is really exciting. Um, we're bringing that diversity through, so we've kind of really got some great opportunities there for moving forward about how we bring our residents with us. We are the engine of the city region. Um, you know, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we are 40% of the, um, the region's economy, um, but only 1% of the UK's economy. So some, some really great stats and some really great opportunity. Our labour market has outpaced our core cities. That's us in the, the, the 
bluey purple line at the, pale, line at the top. And so as with a, all the core cities here, represented here, there's, there's wiggles along the way, but we are, have done three times the national job growth since 2017. The significant work underway that be, you'll be aware of that have come before here and that other, other committees and out, there's been huge investment in the health and life sciences infrastructure, innovation economy through the, uh, the national um, uh, investment, uh, innovation zones um, and the free ports. We are rebooting that focus on regeneration and are working on that uh, on our, on a strategic partnership around on our arc of regeneration and, and tackling those tall, stall sites and our big opportunities. A huge amount of work we've done around connect, digital connectivity and digital infrastructure as well as our transport connectivity um, and lots more work underway in terms of new stations coming forward. And we've been delivering multi-million pound programmes around tackling economic in inactivity, but there is much more, much more to be done. Huge, a huge global brand. We've got huge soft power in that. Um, you know, we've got great stats on there. We've got the fourth most visited city for international visitors, third most um, visited city in England for domestic visitors, and you know, the UK's first best large city for a break. So we've got some amazing, um, you know, good soft power there in our in our brand, um, which needs to be then transferred, you know, out of that visitor economy, not to, not that we want to lose our, you know, visitor economy at all, that's from the Viking Foundation economies, but it's about how we drive that opportunity across other, other sectors. However, we are a city of contrast, as we know. Um, our high growth trajectory was stalled by the financial crisis. We are the, the purple there, sorry, the light, the colours aren't brilliant on this screen at all, so we're kind of, in that cluster um, just behind uh, Newcastle, uh, Manchester's the top line is screaming away up there. Um, so there is a bit of work to be done um, and catching up our, kind of our nearest counterparts in the north. Um, this is going back to the, the business um, vulnerabilities here and the business resilience. So there's um, a, a, what's called a vulnerability index, which comes around uh, the number of businesses and the scale and the size of those businesses. Um, and their individual turnovers and um, uh, their locations in terms of premises ownership. So the business resilience piece um, is, is linked to this kind of national standing, understanding of the business vulnerability index, uh, which then maps all our key sectors about where, where we need to do work, where, um, you know, um, uh, where we have strengths and where we need to be doing work on that. Um, Another, another area of future work to, to area of work to focus on for us is in investment in FDI, which is sorry, foreign direct investment. Um, our levels are much lower than our core cities. Um, for example, in 2019 we had eight projects underway, five projects that's um, generally around inboarding uh, new headquarters or new new large businesses to Liverpool. Manchester had 34 that year. So our growth progress has remained fairly flat on that level since then. And alongside that, we have, um, while we have a high, a high startup rate, relatively high startup rate in the city, we have a very poor survival rate. So within three years, um, the stats are, are not good for the uh, entrepreneurs. So how we how we support those those startups to survive um, and thrive and grow is, is absolutely crucial to the to the. Some of that is to do with the FDI, so that kind of investment, access to investment and growth. Um, but we have got a piece of work plan for the Chamber to start digging into that more. So we're just coming to the end of what's called the UK, UK Share Prosperity Fund, which is the current business support funding. And there'll be a new programme starting in April 1st. And I'm, I'm really um, determined that we're going to be kind of really targeting that money into actually what's needed. So we're, we're just literally doing that piece at the moment about reaching out to try and get into those businesses to understand. Because at, at the moment we run near a lot of business support, whether it's um, uh, how to how to tender, um, you know, marketing strategies, um, all sorts of yeah, everything. So it's kind of whether what we're doing is right, and it's just we've still got that survival rate, and it is down to access to investment. 
um, or whether we need to be doing a much more targeted program, specifically. But I, mean, um, I have exactly the same question. <laughs> To be fair, the Manchester decided um, about 20 years ago they put a team of 25 people into their economic development team and literally just resourced it and went off across the globe and sold Manchester as a headquarters and backed that up with a regeneration program. Um, and, and not many of the core cities did that, because it was, but they, they did that, but the investment. Um, so the rest of us were a bit of catch up. But, um, but we need to be getting those, those kind of big headquarters back to Liverpool because we've had a number of issues where you know, businesses have moved from Liverpool to Manchester and you know, Manchester is now their northwest location and, and we've lost out. So we need to be repositioning ourselves as the, you know, the place to have your headquarters. And that's around having the, that's the collective approach about having the right great day office space, um, you know, the right uh, narrative, the right schools, you know, the, 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 the package has to be right there. Um, what we also have for our residents is that the income gap is widening, um, so that, that you can have the take home pay and the, that, that um, for our residents is, is growing. So that um, there's a 20% increase, which is higher than the, the England average, um, and, and is continuing the, in, in the wrong trajectory. Down where then um, that economic activity, economic inactivity, sorry, comes down 
to. We have significant numbers um, higher than the Northwest in that kind of um, looking after the looking after the family at home um, and kind of undisclosed other uh, is higher. Sorry, I'm going to pop around. Um, and the long-term sick as well. So it's, there's some significant numbers to overcome. Um, workless, workless households again. Um, we are. That, it's not helpful. So the colours of the graph change each time. We are that dark, dark blue that's um, uh, with the top, and then so we're now below Newcastle um, at 19.3% there. Um, and again, that then breaks down by um, on the right hand side. We've then got our kind of breakdown of the our occupations about the kind of skills and the, the declared occupations within the um, census. As always, income is linked directly to, to health and, health and child poverty, um, which is a, um, a and obviously we have a, a huge and um, um, very well written um, state of the state of the poor report released um, earlier in the year, which kind of set out very clearly the, that link between um, household income and, and, and uh, health and inequality. Um, but some really sobering stats um, here, um, and the, then the projections to 2040. Which is, which is increased, which is incredible, and the impact then on, on women, on, on children, um, is, is, um, is so good. Um, the life course stats, um, again, will, you'll be familiar with these came to the health impact reports. So they basically have a red, green, amber um, look at the kind of the, um, all the different components of an individual's life. I'm sorry that it's slightly blurry on that. Larger screen. Um, the, the wider determinants we've got here red for average income, red for un unemployment, red for attainment, red for healthy neighbourhoods, red for housing, um, you know, red for violent crime on, on the left. But those, those, um, the, the main ones are health there. So it's the overall picture you can see we've got you know, primarily red dashboard, some improving, some no change. Um, but work to be done on moving all these indicators forward. Again, another map, but um, mapping out across those same neighbourhoods. And just to note again, you know, we've got 63% of our population living in the top 20 most deprived neighbourhoods in England. Um, you know, 10.5% of them with 1% most deprived. Um, so we have a huge, huge challenges to overcome um, and bring, um, bring with us on that, on that, on that journey. So. Um, as I said, so if we could have, I don't want to be too too depressing. <laughs> the um, thing with, you know, these, these stats, um, uh, unfortunately, are not new or unfamiliar, um, but they are they are um, quite overwhelming when seen together. Um, and we will now talk about the um, kind of the plan for how we how we move <coughs> uh, with those. So what we've done so far is undertake this economic analysis of the city, um, and we've also to undertaken a future look at our court cities, court strengths and weaknesses, and we'll get into that in a minute, and kind of where, that, where the potential is and where that opportunity is for growth and diversification. Um, there's going to be then kind of the strategy core will be a kind of traditional strategy, um, and have that narrative for the kind of the art economic future to 2040, um, and then there's going to be then an implementation or delivery plan attached to it, which we can be held accountable to, um, and our partners, so that will be a city level plan, um, so our partners will be inputting into that as well. Um, just to note again that the city plan, um, that we are also undertaking citywide um, engagement with our with key stakeholders and um, uh, partners across the city. And again, that word inclusive came out really strongly. Employment, skills, growth, opportunity was, a, was such a strong narrative coming out of those those workshops and those uh, engagement sessions. Um, to note as well, we already have work underway for the regeneration perspectives that was launched over the summer, um, which sets out that a massive ambition we have and the kind of the, the drive and the, the work underway about how we are going to unlock unlock some of these school development sites and really fo take a focus on the holistic regeneration, creating really um, you know, healthy and sustainable neighbourhoods. Um, you know, connecting areas of our city that have been left behind, improving productivity um, in terms of uh, our 
business base um, and, and kind of bringing that together. So this is very much a kind of key part and a key narrative um, that will be drawn into the strategy um, about that, that regeneration ambition. Um, so we've undertaken um, a number of stakeholder workshops. We had 56 different organisations in there, 93 participants, and plus a load of uh, cross um, cross council officers, which has been brilliant, just bringing together everyone's views. Um, we focused very much around actually what we meant, what we wanted to achieve through an uh, inclusive economy, and, and putting together all the different pieces needed to actually achieve that around our people and our, and our places, and, and, and how there was a lot of discussion around the interconnectivity of all the of all the areas and, and how it was impossible to achieve the outcomes we needed without driving forward across all of these different agendas. We talked a lot about the barriers um, <coughs> uh, to, to inclusive growth and what, what um, our residents were facing um, in terms of the, the, our neighbourhoods, housing, um, you know, poor quality housing, transport that potentially at the moment doesn't link up the key, key residents areas with key areas of work, um, access to networks came back really strongly. We had a, a lot of um, a lot of focus around young people um, born into um, workforce households um, uh, or or where parents were um, on um, kind of potentially working you know, two jobs and, and weren't in the house as much about how they built those networks, how young people got introduced to introduced to the world of work and got connected into, into that um, and how they uh, uh, you know, re uh, were supported to write an application, how they were supported to what they needed to look for a job. But what, what came out really cl clearly was the, the need to support our young people further than just getting a job or getting work into a career. So that was a, a really key theme and one we're, we're really going to focus on about that and working with young people in a more rounded um, long-term way that actually helps them figure out what they want to be doing and what their career, where their skills are and where their career is and then supporting them throughout um, school and then college or university further education um, if appropriate into whatever career that they choose and it's about that choice and as having those aspirations and that came out really strongly it was that a lot of our stakeholders were pushing us really that the strategy should just be about young people and we kind of push back quite heavily and then we've got you know, huge, huge um, other cohorts that we need to be bringing with us on this journey, but um, I think young people and the importance of, of how we raise those aspirations and bring them with us is, 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 is going to be a strong, strong work plan. Sorry, I won't go through the workshops. Um, I'll just note very quickly on the strategic place index because it's something that we're going to be using to um, monitor the strategy and how, how useful, uh, not how useful, how impactful and how um, how successful it is. So the strategic place index um, will be a series or is a series of indicators um, which are relevant to us. They're, they're being um, discussed a lot and kind of moved around a lot internally um, and will provide us with a package of indicators that are measured regularly at a national level. So this kind of, um, so we will be able to then monitor the progress of the city. So it gives us a baseline now. We'll be able to tr compare ourselves against other core cities, and we'll also then be able to measure the progress. So it's far too time up here, but you have you have it in your pack anyway. So I don't think this is the final final copy potentially, but it just to give you a sense that it it, it um, brings together that those the people and the place in there and about what what we think is going to measure. Yeah. Interesting. Will you so do you foresee them being able to model, model like improving these like cost statistics going forward? I think yeah, I, mean, I think they've got a big task coming up in the neighborhood managers and I think how we move forward with that neighborhood model is really key. We're, we're working so I, I look all, I look after the employment skills and the um, team and we're already aligning our services now with those neighborhood models better so this can be that direct flow and I know a lot of the, the council services are doing that so I think that will really drive and make sure we've got that equality of access across all of the city where potentially it's been patched before because it's been a bit of a struggle to find the right place to deliver from or it's been more of a struggle to get into a particular community and those, those kind of that trust the neighborhood managers kind of 
we're unlocking that trust a bit. So I think there's there's lots of potential to build on that model moving forward. Yeah. 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 So I don't have a question. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so that's just the indicators, and then so we can then as I said, we can then monitor, carry on monitoring those as we as we move through.
back of the labours, you know, good quality family housing in the right areas, you know, good school. Um, and, and we need to really tackle that to make sure we've got the full range of tenures across the whole of the system to make sure that people want to stay and they're not moving to the rural because we get time to again. Um, so that whole housing and regeneration piece is, is really, really crucial and the fiscal infrastructure that comes with that. The strategy is very much underpinned by our net zero, our commitment to uh, net zero for council operations by 2030 and for the city for 2040. Um, and our wider sustainability goals uh, with that. Equality, obviously, absolutely essential to that. Um, and also then that celebration of our um, of the city because that strategy has got to, is tackling some really weighty, difficult issues, but it's also got to provide a, a, a platform to drive inward investment and, and foreign, <coughs> foreign direct investment. So that's what the strategy is at the moment. So lots of work to be done. Basically, lots and lots of work to be done, um, and this is just some of then the work streams that we're starting to pull out and map the activity against, and go and understand who is doing what now in the city, um, what programs are that grant funding specific, so are then limited by geographies. So it might be we've got brilliant programs happening in Speak, but we want them in Kensington. It might be timescales. Um, it might be funding limited, you know, by timescales. Etc. Etc. So we just need to take the best practice that's happening and ensure that the quality of access through. Um, is there any questions before I just go on to that future economy? I've got a question, but maybe what I was going to say to the end, maybe it's now an opportune moment to, to ask. I was just, I think there's obviously a lot of thinking about the strategy and. Uh, I'm just wondering as we're looking through the detail of the how we're going to measure some of these, um, especially when we're looking at kind of thirty percent of you know, the working age population of the have never worked. It's you know it's, it's a stark figure. We had no party conference here um, last week, as I'm sure most of us in the room know. We talked about sort of the youth guarantee, the national service to get people back into into work. I was just wondering, you know, we talk about in that. The detail of it about getting two million people across the country back into employment. So there's going to be detail in the strategy around what that means for the people. We talk about financial reset not actually being in employment, but what's that look like by 2040? Is that you know 20 percent to 10 percent or or zero? Just going to be a bit more detail. Too. Yeah, 100 um, percent. Those outcomes are being finalised, but yes, there will be some, there will be numbers in there to go. This is our, this is what we are aiming towards. It won't just be generic. We want to reduce unemployment. This, this, so we're just trying to map that out at the moment. As well, we want to be ambitious, but obviously there's a realism as well in terms of the current budget situations, etc. So yeah. That comes back to improving the foreign investment as well. We can't achieve. Where we think um, then the growth and the jobs are going to come from. So, 
um, the kind of our, our key sectors are, are, are the, 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 they're not a surprise to anybody, but it's for us it's then about understanding um, the specialisms we have within them. So within the uh, creative and digital, you know, we have unique specialisms around, particularly around um, music and uh, gaming and you know, all sorts of interesting things that other cities don't have. So the, the strategy will then start articulating what those specialisms are. So it kind of differentiates us from um, from um, uh, the rest of the region and from uh, as from Manchester, but, but um, articulating it as the whole then allows us to align and create those sort of clusters. So it's a delicate li a line kind of articulating our specialisms as well as then aligning us as the, kind of the power of the region or the power of the north. Um, so yeah, so we're very much looking at um, how we move away from what we have at the moment from that previous slide, that kind of quite vulnerable, narrow um, foundation economies where we've got a lot of, most of our jobs are focused around um, uh, the digital economy um, and are very much linked to the public sector. So I think 35% I think, um, of our jobs in the city are currently linked to the <coughs> public sector, um, which is, you know, is okay, but that's not a sustainable position for this. We need to, we need to rebalance that. So it's about bringing forward then and working with our um, specialist sectors to increase that job base. Um, so this is our forecast in GBA. I'm sorry, I've got lots of multiple people telling the lines again. But it just shows you um, on the top of my head, I can't even see it, that's dreadful. It comes up all from the screen, I'm so sorry. Um, maybe it's to ruin the packs. We're looking at the smudgy purple, which is helpful, but it, um, it just shows you where our job's going to be. It's advanced manufacturing for us. Um, sorry, not the jobs, one GBA, advanced manufacturing, GBA, so that's kind of the um, uh, uh, gross value added in terms of the turnovers is, 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 going to, is, is projected to increase by 40%. Mm -hmm. Health and life sciences for us, life sciences, there's, there's a slight sector, I think we're getting to now, but life sciences separately, again, huge jobs there, digital gaming. So we can see where our, our jobs can come from, maritime logistics, that's just the evidence base about where these are going to be faced um, across across the city and, and then across the UK. Um, and then the GBA at the bottom, we've got kind of the, uh, the growth values in terms of what we see that's going to be increasing. Um, so this is from the Oxford Economics baseline from the, um, they did the CA and they've then they've managed to extract a little bit of data from that. Um, so it's the growth that that bottom um, chart is easier to understand in terms of then how we see that GBA and financial business and professional services, um, education, health and life sciences really increasing. Um, the productivity again, advanced manufacturing screening away there at the top, maritime and logistics really, really increasing. So again, we've got some really clear um, stats and, and clarity about where, where that GBA is going to be increasing and where and through that then the productivity per um, full-time equivalent in terms of per person is going to be increasing. Um, which is no surprise but it's good to have that being confirmed and also things like digital and creative which maybe people don't think of in terms of um, in, in that way is, is um, massive increasing for us as well. However with that then comes this is the um, job impacts so that all that improved productivity and advanced manufacturing then leads to a deficit then in terms of the job out in the numbers of jobs that delivers. So when we're focusing on how we move our sectors forward, there's one thing around retaining industries such as advanced manufacturing. They, they, they deliver huge business rates, which allows us to reinvest in the city. So there are, you know, and we want to increase to have that GDA we want them in the city, but we're not going to be relying on those for the jobs. So it's just, it, all this work just built, helps us build a picture of how we're working with the sectors and why we're working with them and in what way. Um, so that's in the productivity and growth. So this is kind of um, almost a spot to know on the work we need to do to then improve um, our areas about uh, increasing resilience, driving our productivity, et cetera, broken it down by sectors just separately. Um, Job density, and um, the projections on our job density is, is really um, is, is uh, really positive. We are again that kind of thick um, purpley blue line at the top, um, and, and, and above then our, our 
kind of our, our counterparts in the, in the northwest and the, and the wider functional area. So that's been improving up to the um, one um, job per which is obviously the, the aim for every city to, to get to one, one job per resident. So then our next steps are completing the narrative, testing out, we've been testing out, um, uh, we're, we've obviously been doing the scrutiny, the growth and the economy scrutiny, I'm uh, sorry, cultural economy scrutiny, um, and various stakeholder groups, we've got more stakeholder groups planned uh, throughout October, <coughs> and just touching back in, undertaking the, um, the mapping I was talking around around then building that implementation plan, um, and uh, starting to look then at an external government structure, um, and we're actually going to cover in December, so I'm not going to back you through it and you'll be pleased to hear I think that's the last slide. <laughs> I did have a quick specific question just on the forecast section, uh, if that's, that's all right. Um, uh, so I'm pleased to see the, uh, the, the forecast around the GPA. Um, I'm glad to see that we're predicting that the, the gross value added is increasing, um, mostly across the board. But I'm looking at the marathon and logistics section. Um, I noticed that the, uh, there's a, you, know, you pointed out the forecast increase in productivity. There seems to be a corresponding increase in the number of full time employees. But the GBA doesn't seem to go up very much. So I was just wondering if there's a technical reason for that. It, it's a bit of a funny one with the maritime logistics because we don't have a port in the fall. I was going to say, is it something to do with the port yeah. people being accepted? Yes, <laughs> there's that. Yeah. <laughs> so, most of our, we do have those specialisms. We still have a lot of specialisms linked to the maritime. So, we have a lot of reinsurance companies, um, particular kind of banks that focus on you know, kind of specialise in that area. Microbanks and um, lots of professional business services linked to that maritime, and then linked and then specialist logistics. So those companies are based here rather than in the port. So we have almost a office-based, the white collar jobs, I suppose, mm -hmm. compared to the um, compared to the kind of um, more uh, you know, manual those jobs within the port. So we then see that GBA will increase the uh, projected turnover is going to increase the productivity, is increasing those services. It doesn't then um, track through to the jobs because the increased productivity generally in professional services means less people, more and more less people. I'm looking at the previous slide, we've got the uh, that specialism uh, diagram. Um, uh, if you want to more diversify things and into the knowledge intensive uh, job space, uh, I presume we've got to work hand in hand with the local uh, FE and HE institution to ensure that we're sorting. Directors, and that discusses everything from the impact of students on the um, university positive and negative and uh, issues like that. We then have a, another meeting with our colleges, um, which is chaired by um, uh, my directorate. But Liverpool City College actually is, is taking a real lead on that, so they have what they call an industry led curriculum. So they have um, businesses on their board um, which are you know, from the main employment sectors. And they then devise their curriculum based on um, on the skills that those businesses require. So they take that forward-looking approach um, already, which is great. And we have a very um, regular dialogue. They were from Oxford and the state, all the colleges from the stakeholders here, as well as the schools through um, Liverpool um, Association of Secondary Heads and then the SEMD um, Heads Association as well. So we've been involved in them all the way through, and that conversation needs to continue to develop exactly as you say, to make sure that we're um, ensuring that we're equipping our young people and our adults with, with the right skills. Um, I was actually talking with the um, knowledge reporter yesterday, um, and in, in, in my previous role, we actually uh, we, um, took over, we didn't, but we supported and, and worked with an academy that took over a, a kind of failing secondary uh, uh, sixth form course. And did it as a, a science school, with, and they had links with NASA, and there was a whole kind of training program that NASA developed, and all sorts of interesting things. There's a brilliant ways of doing this at all levels, right down from, from primary and secondary, and then right up through FE and HE. 
Um, and I think that, that implementation plan really needs to tease some of that out and, and make it really clear what's happening and then what needs to be done. Thanks, Katrina. Now that you mention it, I think uh, my colleague over there, Councillor Morris, has been in attendance at some of those meetings with um, Andrew Willis uh, and the university, so uh, might be might have to get into John and see if he's doing something kind of interesting. Um, that takes us to the end of the presentation. Then, are there any further overarching questions? Anything anyone wants to raise? Go on, John. Just I think it's difficult because there's nobody from education here today with. The there's no officers or they'll be in here, but there seems to be lots and lots of focus on adult learning service, apprenticeships, needs. But I think we really struggle as a city because we, as a local authority, we don't have a lot of control over our schools because the faith schools and academies, and I think the schools really need to be on board and we need to be doing more to challenge the schools so that we're not in the situation where Pupils are struggling at 16, post 16, 19. I think it, we, we just need to, as a city, be challenging the schools more. I know it's difficult, but I think it's something that we really need to do because so many of the schools are underperforming and we are letting down lots of children in the city. Just see if anyone else has any other comments. Okay, Councillor Good. a whole work stream around exclusions and looking at those because we've got particular areas where we've got very high levels of exclusions and it, so it's a real area of concern both for the Department of Education and ourselves obviously on that. So that but on the um, SED particularly so we do run a supported internship programme but we, it is you know it's, it's limited as all as all these things are in terms of resource which literally um, so we have DWP assigned up um, and a number of other and my brain's failing me, sorry, but a number of other our big employers, and um, we then do wraparound support so we get children with additional needs as nor 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 neurodiverse young people that potentially aren't performing as as kind of academically, you know, in, in, in school doesn't suit them, is is the kind of basic um, can we do brilliantly in, in perfect setting. So DWP have, have found it an absolute they're um, you know, so complimentary of the process because they find that the kind of the maths based work Within their within their um, work streams that really suits that particular cohort. So the the I think their the numbers of their placements they're taking on massively increased over last year. We're also piloting um, at at your co-opted members. Um, uh, um, uh, you know, ask we we started to look at it last at the end of uh, April, wasn't it? We started to yeah, uh, and it's launched recently about uh, young people with both physical and, and neurodiverse needs as well. So um, that is happening now as well. But again, it's a pilot and we're limited with resources, but hopefully that will give us another some space where we can go and say, actually, as you say, we've, we've been failing a group of young people where they're basically told, that, you know, work's not for you, that that's not gonna happen, and, and this is then unlocking those opportunities. And it's also bringing the businesses with us and, and showing them you know, with, with actually relatively small adaptations and the right support that, you know, um, uh, oh, there's a whole cohort here that can make a really valuable contribution to the workplace. So um, I, I, when we um, come back, maybe with another neat work, maybe we'll bring a report back at some point on, on that because it's, it's been a really interesting pilot. Yeah. Yeah, final question from me. Uh, the report says that it's data driven. I was wondering what one of the most significant um, sources of that data uh, in, in the creation of this report? We, we, we have crawled wide, to be fair, in terms of data. So we've done, obviously, the, the national data sets and, and ONS and you know, the UK government statistics. As I said, we use the um, Oxford Economics to be um, the, kind of the evidence base for um, the region. And so they are kind of a, a very well-respected government-used consultancy that I can only do that forecasting. Kind of what they do. I mean, there is an element of 
and that's a crucible case, but there is an element of, you know, is it forecast at the end of the day? So a COVID or a, um, you know, a, a, an economic, you know, a huge economic shock like we had under trust, then, you know, these things will uh, upset that upset that forecast. But they are, um, you know, a, a, a team of economists and, and data analysts. Um, we also then employed in a circle, so they had, I kept that, economists um, and data analysts then working through, shifting through all that data to bring it together. We used obviously our own internal data, obviously we have Johnny comes regularly with the, the kind of all our KPIs and the, and the data that we monitor, um, as well as then um, kind of a, I suppose, kind of knowledge from the services and that, that kind of wider intelligence-led um, piece as well in terms of knowing, you know, knowing our communities and, and kind of knowing the needs that are coming out. Any other final comments? Okay, so the, uh, the recommendations are to uh, consider and provide feedback, which I think we've done, and then review the progress, which I also think we've done. So, uh, are we happy to know this report? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so moving on then, seven, eight, and nine. Thank you very much, and I'll bring the meeting to a close. Good night.